Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Shooting for the stars, Macomb County leaders make a bid to bring something new to Selfridge Air Base. Football in the spring just doesn't sound right, but it's one of the ideas on the table to keep student athletes safe. The owner of a local banquet hall says he made a mistake on social media by sharing racist posts criticizing the Black Lives Matter movement. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. Gary DiCarlo telling Local 4 tonight he is not a racist, but what he shared on social media made a lot of people think he was. Well, now he's offering an apology. DiCarlo is the owner of a banquet hall in Warren. Larry Spruill is live with what DiCarlo posted and the reaction. And Larry, you were able to reach him by phone this afternoon. What did he have to say? Well, Kimberly, we talked for about 15 minutes today on the phone, and he tells me that he is the one who posted this this post on his Facebook page. Now, he tells me that a lot of people may call it racist, but he says that was not his intent. I just picked an inappropriate post to share, and it wasn't intended to harm anybody. Gary DiCarlo, the owner of DiCarlo's Banquet and Convention Center in Warren, is talking about this post he posted on his Facebook page. It says, Black Lives Matter. The entire country is sick of your expedite, sick of the lawlessness, sick of the riots, sick of the threats and demands. The only thing you have managed to accomplish in all of this is to live up to the ghetto stereotypes. Congratulations. I should have read it more thoroughly before I shared it, and I made a mistake. And I take full responsibility for it. I talked to DiCarlo on the phone Wednesday for about 15 minutes, and he tells me that post does not represent him or his beliefs. He just made a terrible mistake. But it's an error on my part, and uh, it's a shame that it's, it, it's upset so many people, and, I, and that was, certainly wasn't my intent. What was your intent for, for sharing that post? That it was against racism and it was against violence. That is not helping the cause. I am not a racist. Some people are calling you a racist. What, what, is, what is your reaction to that? I am not, and I never have been. Can you understand why so many people would be upset about that, about this post and seeing it on your page? I certainly do now. Um, when I, I thought if I didn't push like and I just push share, I liked some of the things that were said in there, but not all. I certainly want to apologize. And so as you heard, Gary says that he is apologizing, that he, he hopes that the people will forgive him. But I did look at several comments under this post. A lot of people say they will never host an event at his conference hall again. We're live tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry. Devin. When we think of the nation's space program, we think of places like Houston, Cape Canaveral, certainly, uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California. Could Sterling Heights join those lofty company or towns? Believe it or not, that's what the city is angling for. Business editor Rob Maloney live there tonight with a look at just what it would take to make that possible. Rob? Devin, it sounds preposterous, I know. And yet, the federal government is looking for a place to put the headquarters of its space command. And here in the city where they say they innovate living, they want to innovate defense. We depend on satellites for a lot these days. Think your cell phone GPS. The president believes they need protection from other countries who might do them harm. So the new Space Force does the training. The Space Command does the deploying or will when it gets more fully developed. The hope here is it will deploy from Selfridge Air Force Base. That's where they would put the headquarters should the region get the bid. But the request for proposals asked for a mayor to make the pitch and Harrison Township where the air base sits only has a city manager. So Sterling Heights Mayor Michael Taylor raised his hand and filed the paperwork yesterday. You know, aside from the about 14 or 1500 jobs that I've heard that it would uh, employ right at the headquarter, um, it would be a, a, a huge coup for the city of Sterling Heights. Now this might sound like pie in the sky, but Sterling Heights and Macomb County have considerable defense bona fides with a number of military vehicle facilities on what's known as Michigan's Defense Corridor. Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle made a recent pitch to bring the F-35 to Selfridge on the same basis and said it failed only because of a political decision. This one here, we're not sure. Maybe it's going to be a political decision. Maybe it's already forecasted to be in Colorado and they're just, you know, trying to give an impression they want others to compete. 
But uh, we're going to take that chance. And again, what it'll do is it puts uh, Selfridge on the map uh, nationally. Now, the Space Command does have a temporary core headquarters at uh, Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. And uh, while they're not sure whether they're just uh, being enticed to and go into something that's already decided they don't know, but Mark Hackle and the entirety of Macomb County government is from trying to get more activity at Selfridge Air Force Base at every opportunity. And they say they can't resist this one either. Reporting live in Sterling Heights, Rod Maloney, Local Food. Be some kind of plum to land. All right, Rod. Would be. Well, it feels like we're in training for this string of 90 <laughs> degree days ahead of us. It's yeah, it's been easing us into this because uh, wait till you see what's coming as we look way on down the road even, Ben. Yeah, it's a whole lot of the same as we get forward in the forecast, and we would actually enjoy a day like today once we get into the middle of that streak. But we're at 84 with relatively low humidity, so not all that bad out there, especially with a little bit of an east wind just sort of helping things. But we have nine straight days ahead of us, and that's just within our 10 day forecast of 90 degree heat. That is the hottest streak that we have seen in more than 30 years. And it is possible that we could set the all time record of 11 days. And we'll explain why that's a possibility and see how much humidity and storms are coming with it in just a few minutes. If you want to see all of the 90 degree days on the local forecasters app, it does have your 10 day forecast and a lot more. Just search for WDIV in your favorite app store, guys. Okay, Ben, the rise in coronavirus cases is prompting action from Governor Whitmer today. If you were just joining us, the state now reporting 262 new cases. That's down slightly from the number that was reported yesterday. We have lost four more Michiganders to the disease, though. Governor Whitmer is changing two rules involving alcohol. The first stops indoor bar service in most of lower Michigan. The second makes it okay for restaurants to sell alcoholic drinks to go and via delivery. And renewal dates for Michigan drivers' licenses, ID cards, and vehicle registrations have been pushed back to September 30th. Aside from some safety guidelines from the state, it became obvious Tuesday that school districts will largely be coming up with their own plans for their returns to school this fall. For instance, some will be offering more online instruction than others. And as Steve Gargiola reports, that's a big factor parents have to consider when deciding whether to send their kids back. When the school year ended abruptly, online schooling suddenly became a necessity. Now with the threat of COVID-19 still hanging over the new school year, Virtual school is a topic of serious discussion. As a teacher, I hated doing online schooling. I missed my kids. One dad I talked with wants fully online teaching for his kids. He believes more control over how and when they learn is just one benefit. On top of that being bullied at school or having to deal with kids in the hallway and having to deal with just all this stuff that kind of goes on in the school system. The West Bloomfield District is ready to offer full-time virtual school. We are actually starting Lakers Online, which is a fully remote learning only option uh, for our students in West Bloomfield and um, actually within Oakland County. So we are accepting applications from outside of the school district. In Pontiac, students will begin the year with two days a week online and three in school to reduce building capacity. Some parents hate it. Some parents are saying, you know what, it is what it is. It's keeping my child safe and they have uh, adapted to it. Many working parents just don't know how they will handle the strain of this new reality. Everyone can't just stay home with their children and help them, and I'm not gonna leave my 11 to 14 year old at home all day <laughs> to you know, be responsible for their own learning. I can make it work if, if I'm able to continue working from home, but it's not easy, <laughs> definitely not easy. There's no right answer. There's no perfect choice. Detroit Superintendent Nikolai Vitti is fully supportive of online resources for all the students in his district. He says the state just needs to supply more answers as to how districts will meet their budgets. I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. Okay, Steve, and this week we heard Governor Whitmer suggest close contact high school sports such as football be moved to the spring. And some sports that already incorporate social distancing such as golf, tennis and track and field move to the fall. Jamie Edmonds has more on where this idea stands. The governor floated that idea on Tuesday, calling on the Michigan High School Athletic Association to consider it. Well, they tell me today that that's just one of numerous plans they're working on. We don't want to go through another school year where we have to completely cancel a season like we had to this spring. So 
uh, our people in our office are working to have all three seasons. Jeff Kimberly of the MHSAA says they're relying on a lot of sources to come up with ideas and plans that put student athletes safety first. All of the decisions we've made going back to the middle of March have been driven by the governor's decisions and, and her data and the guidance from her health officials. Kimberly says there are 750 high schools and more than 200,000 student athletes statewide. Some have already begun conditioning workouts outside, like the West Bloomfield football team. Their head coach says they are following all the guidelines set by the MHSAA because they hope to play in the fall for a number of reasons. I, I think it hurts us in the sense that uh, a lot of our kids, our senior prospects, won't, they won't get recruited. You know, uh, you know, football, Division One, Division Two is the separate signing day and then there's a February signing day. Recruiting is one thing, Bellamy says, but the high school experience is another. Football kind of cultivates the school year for uh, school spirit. You know, kids come in and you can come to a football game and kind of get the school year going. Kimberly says everything is on the table right now. And, and the, the only contingency isn't going to be the possible flipping of seasons. Uh, if we have to start something in the fall and there's an outbreak and we have to stop, we will figure out a way to finish it later on. The goal is to have four or five plans and go from there so they can pivot on a moment's notice. They should have a decision on fall sports in the next three weeks. Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. Okay, Jamie and Dr. Vidi of Detroit Public Schools tweeted yesterday, quote, we've already engaged many of our high school principals, ADs, and football coaches, and I stand with them to state that the association should not flip fall and spring sports. Football should be played this fall. We believe the association will eventually agree with our position. New numbers show just how bad the coronavirus has hit the auto industry. Fiat Chrysler has reported that second quarter sales fell 39% from the same time last year. The automaker delivered just 600, I'm sorry, 367,000 vehicles in the quarter. GM says its sales for the quarter dropped 34%. GM delivering over 492,000 vehicles, though they did note that things did pick up in both May and June. Ford will release its second quarter numbers tomorrow, and we'll have them then. New at 6. Drivers in Michigan now have choices to make when it comes to our auto insurance. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, what accident victims and the people who care for them want you to know before you make that choice.